So in today's video, we're going to compare how three different setting powders performed on my skin, the Patrick Star Times MAC powder, the Danessa Myricks Evolution powder, and the Beauty Bakery setting flower. I filmed this back in January, so this footage is old, but it still applies to anyone looking for great setting powders. I have combination oily skin that is really balancing out and is becoming less on the oily side, but at the time that I filmed this back in January, I still was doing a makeup routine where I used a very strong mattifying primer. So for all three powders, I use the same makeup routine, moisturizer and a sunscreen. Then I use the Becca Evermatt primer with my Touch in Soul No Pore Blum primer, and I use the Estee Lauder foundation as well as the Tarte Shape Tape concealer in all three of my tests. I tried to wear the foundation for 10 hours or more, and in one of the cases, I ended up sleeping in the foundation. So you're gonna see how busted and crusty I look in that footage. Please see the description box for a list of all of the setting powders, their prices, and where you can buy them. I bought them with my own money, and these opinions are my own. I love the holographic box that the Patrick Star powder came in. I also appreciate the color of the powder. It's like a peachy yellow color. Um, when I swatch it, you can see that there is a white cast on my skin. When I tilt my hands to the side, you can see that white cast. It's 3 p.m. now. I've been wearing this makeup for five hours. So I'm just checking in and showing how the MAC Times Patrick Star powder is keeping my oil at bay. So I did put on highlight, but of course my oils have come through at this point. I see some oils like on my forehead, on my brows. Right around in here but the makeup is still intact it hasn't worn off or anything like that let's look at underneath the eye there is some creasing there and I use my tart shape tape which doesn't crease on me so hmm overall I did find this powder to be brightening but I did notice that it kind of left a white cast. Um, so that's something to take note of. I didn't take any flash pictures with this though. So on this particular day, I was super tired and I ended up falling asleep, but I did wake up to film this for you. So as you can see, I have creasing under my eyes, my face is very oily, and my pores look huge. So this powder is not good for oil control for me and not good for uh, camouflaging my pores. With the flash photo, you can see where the makeup rubbed off, most likely because I fell asleep in the makeup. Okay, so it's 11.20 a.m. and today I'm testing out the Danessa Myricks Evolution Powder. And I'm testing out the color 01. It's the translucent powder and it's the white one. 
she has I think five different ones um, with different tints some have more beige color yellow color all the way up to one that's um, a translucent brown and these powders are said to be great for all skin types and not overly matte but also you know hydrating um, so I'm wearing it and I really like this powder because um, it's very brightening and the Patrick Star powder that I tried yesterday was brightening as well um, so I use this in the same areas that I use the Patrick Star powder down my nose underneath my eyes on my laugh lines and of course in the center of my forehead where I get oily so that's where I put it and this highlight is booming this is underneath I have churro highlight um, from Colourpop and then I have the Carly Bible palette highlight on top of that and then on my lips is a nude lipstick from the Beauty Supply and then a ColourPop lip gloss in Flutter Valley from the My Little Pony collection. So we'll be wearing this throughout the day and see how it lasts. I'm trying to give you different angles. So I just noticed some hair in the corner of this take, sorry about that. Anyway, this is the very sleek packaging of the Danessa Myricks Evolution Powder. I got it in shade 01, which is the lightest shade that they have. Since it claims to be translucent, I wasn't worried about a white cast. When you open up the product, you'll see mesh inside and you can tilt the bottle so that you can actually get powder to come through the mesh. If you're somebody who likes to pour your powder into the top, of your container and then dip your sponge in there that'll be a problem because there's a stopper in the cap and if you try and dip your sponge on the actual mesh the, that doesn't cause the powder to come up so you're constantly having to tilt the bottle over so that you can get the powder you need so it gets kind of cumbersome here I'm doing a swatch test and when I tilt my hand you will see some white granules so a white cast is possible with this powder if you use too much so use a light hand the lighting is super bad in here but it is so it is 4 47 now almost five o'clock um i'm wearing this makeup for some time now and my face still looks really good like hardly any oil is coming through there's some oil there on my nose um but that's usually the first place where i get oil but on the sides of my nose like um right here it's still pretty matte so yeah i'm still looking pretty good So it is 11.25 and I've been wearing this makeup for 12 hours and as you can see it's held up pretty good like you can you know from far away my face still looks the same but when you get closer you can see that you know all the oil has seeped through but under the eye like there's no creasing at all whereas yesterday with the Patrick Star powder you could see that there was um, quite a bit of creasing and like all the makeup has stayed in place it's just that I've gotten oily which is to be expected because I am an oily person and plus I've been wearing the makeup for 12 hours so even somebody who's not oily would have had some oil breakthrough at this point but I still think my face looks pretty good so yeah this is the Vanessa Myricks powder after 12 hours of course my lip color has worn off but I was wearing a nude anyways so doesn't matter but yeah, these are my pores. But they don't look as bad as they looked yesterday with the Patrick Star powder. Like, I have minimal, cre no creasing on the laugh lines. That's really impressive because I always get a lot of creasing there. So, so far, the Danessa Myricks powder is in the lead. So, tomorrow I'm be I'll be testing out the Beauty Bakery powder, which 
is one of my favorites, if not my favorite powder. Um, and we're going to see how that compares. Hey, it's approximately uh, 12 noon. Wait, let me show you the time. Ah, okay. So it's 11.55, almost 12 noon. I'm testing out the Beauty Bakery powder. Now I've been wearing this for months now and I absolutely love it, but I want to test it against the wearability and the brightening power of the Danessa Myricks powder and the Patrick Star um, Times Mac powder. I want to see if it keeps my under eyes from creasing as well or better than the other powders and also keeps these laugh lines from creasing as well and just you know keeps my oil at bay and stuff like that so I'll check back in with you throughout the day and at the end of the day. So I actually own three of the four shades that they offer, which is the translucent, the banana powder, and the brown powder. They offer a pink one too, but I couldn't imagine myself using that. So the interesting thing with this formula, the translucent one, which is the one I use the most, um, does not have talc, it has cornstarch, but then the brown shade and the yellow shade contain talc. I don't have any issue with powders that have talc, but just wanted to let you all know about that. I love the packaging, it's very similar to the Patrick Star packaging, just traditional um, powder container. And this is the translucent powder up close, and now I'm gonna swatch it. And when I tilt my hand, you're gonna see that there is no white cast. On a side note, this is the last footage of my dear iPhone 5S that I dropped in a washing machine. Rest in peace, iPhone 5S. But anyway, it's 5.21 p.m. and I'm doing a check-in. As you can see, there's no creasing under my eyes, there's no creasing by my lips. Uh, there is some makeup removal by my nose because I wear glasses, but other than that, my makeup looks perfect. And now it's 10.22 p.m. And this is my final check-in and my makeup still looks absolutely perfect. This Beauty Bakery powder is just awesome. I really love it. My mom uses it too. And even though it controls my oil really well and she has dry skin, she doesn't say that it dries her out. So that's awesome. Um, as I'll say in some clips later, skin prep is everything with makeup. So just make sure your makeup is, or your face is moisturized before you apply. Um, powders that you think might be drying, but it's always good to set your face with powder to lock in your makeup look Especially if you have oily skin like me So my final thoughts with my combination oily skin the beauty bakery setting flower wins for me by a long shot it keeps my makeup locked in exactly how I applied it and that is my goal. Because I have combination oily skin, when I first started wearing makeup, my main problem was that my makeup was looked really nice once I put it on, but as the hours went by, maybe just one or two, my oil would break through and I would look crazy. I would just look shiny and stressed out and weird. But as somebody with oily skin, I want control doing this. So the Beauty Bakery powder helps me to be matte in the places that I want to be and I can stay looking that way all day, which is awesome. It keeps my laugh lines from creasing. It keeps my under eyes from creasing. It's really nice. And also it doesn't give me um, any flashback. It doesn't give me a white cast and I really, really appreciate that. And I think because the owner of this company is a black woman, she definitely put that into consideration. She really considered that because that's a main problem that people with darker skin always have to worry about. And so I'm so happy that whenever I put that on, that's something I don't have to worry about. So because, you know, it is so mattifying, if you have dry skin, it may, um, it may not be your favorite powder, but I think skin prep is everything. And if you moisturize your skin, then this powder won't bother you too much but use it sparingly if you have dry skin. If you have oily skin, you're gonna love this. The yellow one has talc as well, and 
uh, Patrick Stars Powder had talc. Now Patrick Stars Powder is definitely more suited for those with dry skin because Nima Tang, she loves the Patrick Star Powder and her skin is super dry. It's also much deeper than mine and she doesn't have any problem with flashback even though I think it gave me a little bit of flashback. But I have heard in the past that talc is not good in setting powders, but honestly, it has never bothered me. So if you've heard that before and you've been staying away from setting powders with talc, give these a try because I don't really see talc messing up my skin. My, you know, it hasn't messed up my acid mantle. It hasn't um, made my makeup look weird. So yeah, talc is no biggie for me. With packaging, I definitely prefer the Patrick Star packaging and the Beauty Bakery packaging. The Danessa Myricks packaging is really weird. It looks really cool because it has like some mesh right here and whatever, but when you dip your, your sponge into there, if all this powder goes away, then you have to close it and then tilt it to get more powder. And then you can't pour any powder into the cap and then put your sponge in it because it has this weird thing here to stop powder from coming out of the mesh when the cap is on it so it's a cool concept and it looks really sleek but when I'm working with it day to day it's just kind of weird. If you're going to apply the Danessa Myricks powder or the Beauty Bakery powder with a wet sponge and not a brush definitely don't overload the sponge because when you go to apply it on your face it can leave some concentrated uh, parts of the powder and it'll be like a white spot on your face and you're trying to sweep away the powder and it won't go away. So just use a light hand and build up the powder instead of putting a lot on. With the Patrick Star powder, I feel like you can cake a lot on and it's okay. Yeah, so that's it. Those are my thoughts on those three setting powders. I hope you enjoyed seeing the wear tests, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and hopefully this information was helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for your comments. Sorry for my delayed responses, but I appreciate all of you who do come to my channel, and I really appreciate YouTube because I've learned so much from other people, so I'm happy to share whatever I have learned with others who also want to learn. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.